One of the terms we hear a lot today is artificial intelligence. Everything is powered by AI. Of course, that's a marketing term. What they're really talking about is machine learning and techniques like neural networks. Now, if you don't understand how this all works, today I want to have a look at the very basic principles of a neural network and just to show you it's not actually as mysterious as you might think. And for those of you that are into coding, there is also going to be a Python program at the end to show you how you can write your own neural network and do your own bit of machine learning. But whether you're a coder or not a coder, there's lots to understand here in these kind of these baby steps about uh, neural networks and machine learning. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, with traditional programming, you would have uh, an input, something you're sending into a program. The program would then do something very, very clever, uh, and then the output. So even this red pointer that I'm using here, there's a little bit of a program that says, move, you know, add one, add one to X, or minus one to X, or Y to make the dot appear into a different place. So you have an input, which would be the current cursor position. You do something clever, which is to add it or subtract its current position to make it move left or right, and then that would be the output. Now, what I wanna do is show you an example of how you convert from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Of course, Kelvin is the scale that allows us to go down to absolute zero. So just so we can see here, 75 degrees Fahrenheit is 297.039 degrees Kelvin. Now, in a traditional program, the way you do that is you'd have the input would be in Fahrenheit, 75. You then do the maths here, minus 32 multiplied by 5 over 9 plus 273.15. You do that bit of maths and you get 297.093. So that is a very simple example of how a traditional program, you'd use an algorithm which is really just the formula in this case, to actually convert from one thing to another. You have an input, you do some work on it, and you have an output. Now with machine learning, it's a bit different. With machine learning, you don't give it the formula or the algorithm. You say, this is what I've got here, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is what I want, that's the 297.039 Kelvin. And notice now this is an, an arrow for inwards because it becomes part of the, what goes into the algorithm. And I want you to learn how to convert this to this. And you might want to give it more examples. You say, well, okay, if you just want more than one example, minus 200 Fahrenheit is actually 144.261 Kelvin. And if you want another example, 14 Fahrenheit is 263.15 Kelvin. And by constantly repeating uh, the different sets of data and doing it many times, the, this algorithm here, this learning system, this machine learning system, finally says, ah, now I see the relationship between this, the input that we have, and what the expected result is, which we've also fed it in here because we're telling it what we want, the question and the answer. So what's inside that black learning box? Well, there are many, many techniques. When it comes to neural networks, this would be a kind of a typical uh, diagram. You have an input. In our case, it was like 75 degrees Fahrenheit. You have these circles, which we call neurons. Okay, and a neuron has an input. And then from the neuron, it then fires off to another layer. In this case, this could be the output layer. And the output layer is made up of what comes down this line, what comes down this line, and what comes down this line. Now, this is actually a fairly simple network. You can, of course, get them with 20, 30, 40, 50 layers and many, many, many more neurons in them, depending on how complicated the task is. But, uh, you know, a, re a very simple one would be input, a hidden layer with some neurons, and then output. Now, the output in itself was a neuron, and what its output is, because there's only one, that's the answer. So that's what happens. You get a single answer there at the end. Now, if we use our example here, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, some stuff goes in here inside the, neuron, the neurons, and then at the end, you get 297.039 Kelvin. Now, it turns out that you can actually do this conversion with just one neuron. So the most simplest neural network you can have a one neuron network, and you give it the input of 75 Fahrenheit, and its output, the result of it, is 297.039 just using one neuron. And why does that work? Well, because two of the properties of a neuron are its weight and its bias. So its weight is a characteristic and its bias is a characteristic. And when you train up a neural network in the learning phase, this learning process, what actually happens is the weight and the bias get altered so that you can do this conversion or you can start to learn 
to the, the thing that you want it to learn. So the output from a neuron is the input times by the weight plus this bias number that you're try that you're built into it. So if we look here, if the weight is 0 0.55555 and the bias is 255.38, look what happens. 75 Fahrenheit times by 0.555 plus. 255.38 is 297.04 and we want 297.039 which rounded up is 297.04. So using a single neuron with a bias and a weight we've been able to convert from Fahrenheit to Kelvin but of course we didn't give it this weight and we didn't give it this bias that's what the machine learning algorithm does as you train it as you teach it it adjusts that weight and that bias until it can get the result that is expected and the reason this works for the kelvin to uh, fahrenheit to kelvin uh, conversion is that normally kelvin is fahrenheit minus 32 times by five ninths plus 273.15 that's the formula for conversion, which if you multiply out the uh, the brackets here, you get Fahrenheit times by 5 ninths minus 32 times by 5 ninths plus 273.15, which actually means it's Fahrenheit times by 0 0.55555 minus 17.77 plus 273.15, which of course when you do the 17 here and the 273 there, you actually get Fahrenheit times by 0 0.5555 plus 255.38. So if you have this as the weight and this as the bias, you can actually convert from uh, Kelvin uh, Fahrenheit to Kelvin. So as you see here, Fahrenheit times by weight plus the bias. Now, what I want to do for those of you that are interested in coding is to show you how you can do this very, very simply in a piece of Python. I'm going to use Python 3. You also need to install TensorFlow and NumPy, and you do that using pip3 install TensorFlow 1.9.0, NumPy is equal to 1.16.4. And the reason why I specify the two numbers is that as TensorFlow is going towards version 2 at the time of making this video, there does seem to be some incompatibilities between the version of NumPy that you choose and the version of TensorFlow. These two work together very well and the code will be able to be found here uh, on my GitHub repository along with many of the code and examples that I've used here for different videos. Now, once we get into Python, I want to just show you a few things. First of all, we have an array of Fahrenheit's and Kelvin. So minus 40 Fahrenheit is 233.15 uh, Kelvin. In fact, we can go through all of those. And I've listed four here on the slide. In fact, I've got nine in the program. It was just, it, it looked ugly here on the slide. But basically you have uh, the set of questions, which is the uh, Fahrenheit and the set of answers. And you tell the neural network, I want every time you see these numbers, what you don't want, understand, learn how you create these numbers. And the way you do that is you can create this one neural network using TensorFlow. There are some different things here. A dense layer basically means everything in the layer is connected together. In fact, we only want one and we want an input of one, just like that diagram I showed you. There's an input of one and there's one neuron. And then you basically say, create me this model, this neural network, please. And it's going to be based on this thing called a sequential, which is basically layers stacked on top of each other. In this case, there's just one layer with, with one neuron. And then you do a bit of stuff here. You have to compile that neural network. And there's some stuff here that we won't go into now. But if you use this on your simple neural networks, whatever problems you want to solve, it will be fine. There's obviously lots more to learn here, but that will be fine. And then what you do is you train up. Now, fit is the term they use for training. So you say, I want you to train this model, that's the neural network we created. Here's my inputs, the Fahrenheit. Here's what I'm expecting, the Kelvin. And I want you to do it 9,000 times. So it will show it all those numbers in those two arrays 9,000 times. And each time you show it, it gives it a chance to tweak the weight, tweak the BIOS to fit better the, the question to the answer. And the first, as you start out, those numbers are just random or they're zero or whatever like that. And as you go through training it, they get tweaked. So that in the end, you get the weight that we want and you get the bias that we want so that we can do this conversion. But we haven't told it how to do this. There's no algorithm here saying, this is how you convert from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. We just told it, these are the Fahrenheit, these are the Kelvin. Now you go and work out what weight and bias you need to do that. 
And then finally, I just print something out here to test that the model is working. So I say, print out this a string here, look between the quote, minus 50, I'm expecting 227.594. And then I say, hey model, the neural network we've trained up, please predict the answer for minus 50. So minus 50 Fahrenheit will give us a number uh, in Kelvin. And so what we'll do now is we'll jump over to uh, my uh, Linux PC and we'll actually run this in real life and see what happens. Okay, so here we are on a Linux PC and I have a program here called Fahrenheit to Kelvin.py and there you can see it's not very long. Okay, and that's basically the bits that I showed you uh, in the slides there, starting with those two arrays, you can see the much longer arrays there, then the building up the dense layers, then the compile, and then the final thing. So let's run it and see what happens. So we run Python 3, Fahrenheit 2, Kelvin.py. It takes a few seconds to train up that network with the 9,000 uh, iterations it's gonna do. And finally, we're gonna see an answer come up for that print statement at the very end there. So here we go, print, minus 51, I'm expecting 27 point 594, what I actually got was 227.59433. So that's that's pretty much on the nose there for uh, that conversion. Now I have a second program, which is uh, basically exactly the same, except for I've added in a few things. At the very end here, I put in four print statements. One is to test minus 50 again, then one for zero Fahrenheit, one for 50 Fahrenheit to see where that's working. And then finally, I say to uh, TensorFlow, please print out actually what the weight and the bias is that you have for that neuron. So let's run that and we can see how that works. So again, it's Fahrenheit to Kelvin number two, just a quick version I've made. Again, it takes a few seconds to do those 9,000 iterations where it's tweaking the weight and tweaking, tweaking the bias so that actually it comes at the right number. There we go, minus 50 is about right, zero is pretty good. 50, 283.15, 283.14993. So rounding up, that would be right. But here's the interesting thing, look at these uh, layer variables, 0.555556 which is five over nine. And look at that, 255.37215. So those are the weight and the bias that we have used to actually uh, create that conversion. Okay, so there was the demo running on a Linux PC using Python. Of course, this is just the start. And the way you build up more complicated neural networks is you add more and more neurons. You have more and more complicated input. Now, not just a number. We could have a picture. We could have text. We could have speech. And then you want it to do something and recognize that picture, that text, that speech, and give you an answer, classify, tell you what it is. So there's always more to learn. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see the next step, maybe something a bit more complicated, again, with a bit of Python thrown in to show you how to do it, please do let me know in the comments below and I will think about making that. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. If you like this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, please consider sticking around by uh, subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.